My name is John Hill. I'm the creative director of The Telegraph, so I work here every day of the week, so this is my home turf. So I'm sorry if the toilets were smelly or dirty. The beer is good. Um, but I'm going to quickly talk to you about, yeah, from, from print design to product design. So uh, unlike Rory's brilliant talk, mine doesn't really have a hypothesis or anything. It's just a kind of slight rambling of 20 years working in design. So a bit of print, a bit of product. Hopefully a few little nuggets along the way. Completely open for questions. So uh, I should warn you, first of all, I've been working in newspapers for the last 10 years of my career. We swear a lot in newspapers. I recommend once this talk's done, you look out that window and see the newsroom. I mean, to be fair, once we're done, most people have finished their job, and there'll still be some people out there, but news is a rough-and-tumble business, so we can swear quite a bit. Um, while I work at The Telegraph, and you're on The Telegraph's turf, and I'm going to talk a lot about The Telegraph, these are my opinions, this is not the opinions of The Telegraph, so please don't misquote me or call me out on anything that I'm saying. These are my opinions, this is not what The Telegraph believes in. So, with that said, you can... Say what you like about me on Twitter, and I hope you do. And, you know, if you're querying stuff or you want to um, ask stuff when you go home, and you think, actually, I wish I'd asked, this is my Twitter and Instagram handle. So I'm going to talk mostly about life at the Telegraph, but hopefully give you some insights about what it's like working in a, a newspaper organization. And I think, I hope, the one thing that comes out of it is that you'll realize that actually for a pretty dusty old brand like the Telegraph, we do some pretty cutting-edge stuff from... Uh, all the social media design we're doing through to voice design, um, sound design, marketing and brand um, is pretty broad. So I like to think of our design department at the Telegraph. I'm not going to tell you exactly how many designs we have here, but there are a lot. And these are all the areas that we look at um, on a day-to-day -day basis. So from the left, brand and product design. Uh, from the right of that line onwards, this is all. these are all disciplines out in the newsroom. Uh, these are all little clusters of designers all around the building and it's a bit like I think it's a bit like kind of coming to work here is a bit like going to design university because you can really you can start here as a magazine designer but end up here as a product designer or you can come as a UX designer and really actually get into social media and want to learn more about that and hopefully if I'm doing my job right I'm joining up those dots and letting people develop as they go um, one thing that we're getting very excited about at the moment is emerging formats, so that includes things like Snapchat, Instagram stories, how do we tell stories, how do we tell journalism in a, in a really fresh way to new audiences, uh, which I'll go into in a little while. And then our more traditional graphics desk who are doing maps and diagrams and charts and things, how do we merge those two teams um, and do, well, I think everyone is kind of overusing this label, but visual storytelling, how do we tell uh, traditional journalism um, stories through new mediums and these two guys are really matching up quite a lot at the moment. The other thing I wanted to call out here specifically for this group is that we recently have taken the decision not to call people you, back to your question about you, you know, job titles and labelings. I mean it's a massive thing, right? It's a big thing for us and your brilliant slide, which I wish I was sitting in the middle because I could have got a photograph of it all these job labels, I mean, they do my head in, and my job is to recruit these people and retain them and keep them interesting and exciting. But actually, it was starting to become a bit divisive and problematic for us to have UX and UI designers. And we started talking much more about product designers and people that have this broad base. So you, I'm completely 100% with you. It's, it's about people that are interested in all disciplines. They may have their peaks and troughs, but if I'm doing my job well, I will join them up in little groups and teams across that whole broad spectrum and then that's how we make, I think, exciting products and people learn while they're here too. So that's one thing we're saying. And then the other thing that I live, live by and I hope I encourage my designers to think like this is that we do a lot of user testing. We do a lot of stuff with customers and real people and we have a lot of very opinionated people in the building who are all experts. These are editors, sub-editors, picture editors, lawyers, uh, tech people, engineers, product managers, you name it. And people get really, designers in my team get very upset if people don't like it. But I say, hey, don't worry. If nobody hates it, then nobody loves it. So don't worry too much about that. And don't worry too much if your user testing doesn't go so well. Let's work out why people can't use the product. But if nobody, you know, if people don't like it, that's not really always a big problem. So I encourage people to be braver about that stuff because I think we are in danger, all of us, of making very mediocre work because we're so worried about uh, appealing to the lowest common denominator. I think I encourage you, I challenge everyone to be a bit braver about that and make some work that's going to stand out and be expressive. And that's our duty as well as making it usable, et cetera, et cetera. So lecture over. I'm going to talk a little bit about my route to where I am today. I started working, I, w I went to university, did a general graphic design degree. I then went and worked in a small studio in Hoxton Square with this guy called Simon Esterson, who probably may not mean anything to you, but he's a pretty big legend in the sort of editorial design world. 
Um, worked with him for six years. There were about three of us there, so I really it was like an apprenticeship. So I sort of stuck at that for a long time. Learned a lot about typography, grids, or sort of proper, proper, proper training through um, many, many late nights and long weekends working on projects because there was only a few of us. We had to really graft and dig deep. Um, doing things like newspapers, magazines, mostly weirdly, oddly, for a London-based studio, most of our clients were abroad, so Geneva-based newspaper, an Italian-based architecture magazine. Um, really going in and redesigning these products and then handing them back to the client and then getting out of there again. Um, then I started my own business for about two years, was sort of working for my own clients and kind of making ends meet. meet is that the right expression? Yeah. Uh, and then Neville Brody, who may be familiar name for some of you, um, his studio, who... So I basically only work for blokes who have beards. That's basically my motto. Um, his studio is most famous for the redesign of a magazine or launching a magazine called The Face back in the 80s and 90s, a big fashion magazine, um, and doing very interesting work, um, very punky work. And then he called me, and as you can tell, I'm pretty straight, square guy, um, not particularly punky, and I thought, well, this guy can't be ringing me to do some record covers or a new font for a snowboarding company. Uh, but it turned out that he had been asked by the Times of London to do the redesign that followed them going from broadsheet to compact. Um, so I worked with Neville for about two years, making the Times, in its smaller size, hopefully look better. So basically what they did for about a year is they ran a broadsheet newspaper and a tabloid newspaper, the same content every single day, but in two different formats, which was insane. And that was like a live A-B test. Right, imagine that and how much that must have cost, both in terms of people's health, trying to make two newspapers every single night, and also in terms of revenue for publishing and all the paper and everything. And it turned out that people, the market, preferred the smaller newspaper. Uh, so once they switched off the broadsheet, they then realized that this looked pretty crap. They had made a pretty bad job of making it smaller. They just literally shrunk it all down. So Neville and I helped them redesign it. That was a pretty big, long two-year project. And then I was going in and out of the time as a consultant, and then they kept me on there as their design editor, which was primarily print-based. Um, some of the most, I think, um, memorable days there, I mean, the great thing about working in newspaper is you're not, you're not doing the marketing for a bubblegum company, or you're not doing kind of, you know, pretty soulless work. You're, you're working on tomorrow's version of history. So you know, without getting too romantic about it, is a pretty, it can be quite a profound job to work through some of the big moments in British history or society. Uh, the Royal Wedding was a great uh, occasion for the country, obviously. This was a wraparound front cover we designed, so if you imagine when it's on the newsstand, you're just seeing the front half. Everybody else was using the picture of them kissing on the balcony. We thought this was much more expressive of the day, so that was our front page wraparound. Um, and then other nights where, you know, you're happily working along and you kind of think you've finished for the night and then it turns out about midnight, Michael Jackson dies. And then you scramble back to your desk and you keep working all the way through the night. And this one, I don't know if you can see up there in here, top, top, top corner in the red writing, that's a 4 a.m. edition. Basically, because that news broke in the UK quite late, we just kept reprinting and changing that front cover. In another version of this talk, I've got all the different versions of the front covers we designed, but this, we don't have much time tonight. I want to get to some digital stuff, so... But we kept going on this thing. Then the day after, we made um, a special souvenir supplement about Michael Jackson's life. These are some of the spreads of the supplement. Center spread, his afro is the, the family tree of the Michael Jackson's family, uh, all the Jacksons in there. We, we got the graphics team to make on the back page a um, graphic of how to do the moonwalk, so you could learn and teach yourself how to do the moonwalk. Uh, quite a fun project to work on and then and, and other moments in you know my time at the times were that stick in my memory as the first black president of the United States and, and really how you're designing for that and marking those occasions you, you realize that this is a this is a this is, it goes beyond design this is a, like re remembering history and forevermore um, and then anyway we were going through all these projects and and it was all going very well and then in 2010 um, the times was based in Wapping at that time and I was asked to go to a special meeting in a corridor that I'd never been down before into a room with a big lock. And then on the desk were these weird things. And it turned out in 2010 that these were iPads. And we had apparently the first ever iPads in the UK. And they're in this kind of weird, like metal things chained to the desk. So these things are literally like you can't, you can't see them. 
you couldn't take them away and you, they were locked in a room uh, and only a few people were allowed in there and they were like oh yeah Rupert Murdoch has said to Steve Jobs that when the iPad launches in the UK the Times will be the first app for a newspaper on, on the iPad this was about six weeks before the iPad was due to be released in the UK and I remember holding on this thing and swiping it up and down and pinching and zooming on the type I mean we had all been designing for web with like Georgia and whatever, and now we could have our own fonts and zooming in and out, and this thing was crystal clear, and the, the transitions were beautiful. And, it, and it, at that p point in my life, I pretty much had a moment where I kind of, as a print designer, went into, I fully, fully engaged with digital design after that point, because up until that point, for me, it was just frustration all day long. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love coding, I love the idea of sort of generative design and all these things I'm getting really into now, but up until that point, it was just frustration. But the iPad, for me, was a transformative moment where I thought, fuck, we could do great design on a screen, let's get on it. So we did, and we made, we did in six weeks make the first app. We also made, um, this was like early, early, early responsive design. So we had an editor who didn't quite understand that trying to design things in columns on a screen that could also be at different sizes is a really, really tough thing to do. But he insisted, he said, no, no, what we try, and he was right in a way, because he was trying to say there's a paradigm shift for many of our readers that they're used to reading things in newspapers in columns. They're going to this new screen thing that no one has ever, ever, ever seen before. We need to take them with us and we need to let them understand it's just like their newspaper. It just happens to be on a screen. They just swipe instead. We said, yeah, but we can't be on iPad, Android, 7 inch, 11 inch, all these different things, and do columns. It just can't happen. We do this every single day. We publish a newspaper every single day. This thing is too difficult. But we persevered, we lost a load of money, we lost a load of readers, because it was buggy as hell. But we made this app that allowed you to reflow pictures and text into columns. And then it was a first, my first learning on, on uh, responsive web design. Um, we also did the first paywall, which I think for you guys is not that exciting, but for newspapers it was like a massive, massive thing. Uh, and then the other sort of highlight from that time, it was around the London 2012 Olympics, where it literally for two weeks we made... I mean, there's so much stuff I could talk about six hours about it. We made videos, websites, apps, this, that, and the other. But the real buzz, I'm afraid, for me, was still print design when we, every single night, at about 10 p.m., just before we were going to print, chose the picture and the story of the day, and then every night made a wraparound poster front cover. And we had to tell this story both off the front page of the newsstand, but also once you opened this thing out. This thing then opened another time again so it had then more photography on the inside and these became collectible souvenir editions we did that every night for two weeks the editor and the audience loved it so much we were selling loads of copies that he said yeah let's do it all again for the Paralympics so we did it all again for the Paralympics I remember it nearly killed us but it was great fun then and you're going to shout at me when I'm running out of time right because I'm going to just go as fast as I can so 2014 I was happy at the times but the telegraph rang me and said um we want to change everything. We want to redesign everything, and that means all of our apps, all of our website, our brand, everything. We want to do the whole thing. And I thought, that's bullshit, because no one really ever does that. They just do the little bit. But they're using a carrot to dangle. But, and I'd been at the Times for seven years, and I thought, well, why not? Let's go and have a look. And, you know, Telegraph's near Buckingham Palace, and it's all very uh, new and exciting. And I thought, well, come and see what's happening. Um, this was the newspaper beforehand. Um, just was just out of control for me. This was meant to be Britain's, I mean, we call ourselves Britain's leading quality newspaper. And like this thing, like typography is all over the place, colors like a riot. It's just, it's, I think it was poor. And I came here and I had this very pretentious, I gave this very talk on this very stage about this very sort of pretentious, high-minded ideal that I had about coming to Telegraph, which was to say, you guys are, and I said this to the whole of the staff in this very room, I said, you guys are like the British Museum. You've been around a long, long time, and when you arrive at this broadsheet newspaper, it's like coming to the British Museum. It's like this enormous, big, impressive, slightly overwhelming building, but you know when you go through those doors, it's going to be, you're going to learn something, and you know, you've, they, you've got an authority that no other newspaper in Britain has, so you should hold on to that, because there are a lot of people around that time saying, yeah, we've got to be down with the kids, we should do this, we should do that, and I'm saying, no, no, you mustn't throw that away. But when, I don't know if you've all been to the British Museum, but when you go through, into the round reading room in the central courtyard. Um, Foster architects have built this amazing glass roof over the top that the engineering for this glass roof could only be realized with computer-aided design. Every triangle of glass is a different size, apparently, because the square is, the, the courtyard isn't completely square. My metaphor and slightly labored point for them was, you know, 
on the surface, you're this to your audience. But when we're making new products and when we design things afresh, we should bring the most cutting-edge engineering and technology, which my colleagues here help us deliver. Um, we should be as progressive and, 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 and futuristic as we can possibly be, but we can't throw away the old stuff because that's what gives us the authority. You know, when we've got all these new startups around us, we need to remain the telegraph that people remember for, you know, 160 odd years. So people kind of nodded and went, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah, well, well, come on then, let's do that. So I, I did some very, very, very simple things. We basically calmed down the color palette. We retained, but kind of restored, almost like a kind of stonemason, restored the Gothic type masthead, which everyone was telling me, we've got to ditch that thing. That's so old school. It's like kind of like weird Gothic lettering. Was like, no, no, that's the badge that gives us the authority to be progressive in, ev in other places. A couple of typefaces, that was it, basically. A very, 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 very simple palette. But then we, when we design using that palette, as you hopefully see in the next few slides, we, we push that to its absolute limit. So this is a typical, this is what you, I think, when you came to Telegraph today, I think this is what you thought, this is what is in your mind of the Telegraph. This is a typical day for us, you know, pictures of the Queen, royal family, we're all pretty safe, it's all quite nice, you know, Brexit, all the rest of it. Uh, and then, you know, what I have to make sure is that we've got a template in a design language that can do the regular stuff, but can also, a uh, minute's notice, do the irregular stuff. And we have to be able to respond with authority. So we can't be jokey, we can't be ridiculous, we have to retain our authority. Obviously, there's a terrible Grenfell night with that. Uh, well, it's actually the day after, because that happened through the night, as you'll remember. Um, so. We, the point I'm trying to make here is that when you're designing for news, you have to retain quite a sober palette because you don't know quite what you're having to talk about for, come day to day, uh, which is a big design challenge. Um, I made this little gif one night when there was the last election. This is the number of iterations we made through the night for the front page. Not all of these got published, but lots of them did. Uh, and I just did a screen record on the guy who's designing the front page. I'll just quickly play through it again. Um, and this also gives you a little clue as to the sort of number of things we're doing. And this is probably between the hours of about 8 p.m. and 2 a.m. So making changes, getting photographs, changing the headlines, you know, graphics coming in, stuff going out. Um, uh, and then the other thing, which I think will probably still be on the floor when we come out of here, you can look down on the floor out there. Every single night we make sure, in a quite an old school way, but I think it's really important, we get every, every single page of the tomorrow's newspaper will be printed out, laid out on the floor and we review it in a run-through just to make sure the pages are as good as possible. Uh, I'll skip forward. Um, the other stuff, just to quickly cover off all the rest of the products that we have been doing for a long time, day in, day out, is all the other print stuff. I mean, we do a ton of print, a ton of print. Magazines, sections, weekend sections, uh, yada, yada, and 364 days a year. The only day we don't design and make a newspaper is Chris uh, Christmas Eve for Christmas Day. All the rest of the time we're, we're making pages. Um, I'll skip through that. The other thing we do, which we talk quite a lot about, beyond the news organization that you'd imagine, the newspapers that we make, we, we, we have a bunch of businesses that we call our diversified businesses. Um, one of them is travel, so we have an enormous travel audience for our, through our Telegraph travel journalism, but we are now partnering with people like Booking.com and Expedia to take people on a journey to say, okay, you read about this hotel in the Telegraph, now you might want to book that. We've recommended this hotel because we've sent a journalist to visit it. So we made this quick promo video, which hopefully the sound is going to work. As well as doing kind of news and journalism, we're now broadening out into what we might call product design and, and looking at people's user journeys and trying to convert into a transaction. Um, I wanted to quickly show this as a sort of crude timeline or, or sort of like spectrum in a way. If, if, when I talk to the designers about where we are on a spectrum, on the far left we've got the queen and the front page and the broadsheet, and this is our kind of 
heritage product, if you will. That's the, been going 160 odd years. The thing down, and then you know, you could almost put every single other product we've designed for on on a on a line here. The thing that is our most far out product that I want to show you is our Snapchat product, which we've been on Snapchat for I don't know nearly a year now, um, trying to both challenge ourselves to design for a new audience and a younger audience and an audience that won't care about the Telegraph. Who are, who are the Telegraph? I mean, my 14-year-old daughter's like, yeah, whatever, I don't even know what Telegraph is, but you know, oh, but I see some of their stuff on Snapchat and it's our experimentation area to see if we can tell stories to a new audience and try and start to get into their heads and get them to understand you know, that Telegraph is a good place for, for journalism. So I'll show you this quick video, which is probably our kind of showreel for the last sort of six months worth of Snapchat experiments, which by the way is going really well, especially now they've opened it up for a global audience, it used to just be UK. I'm gonna play. <laughs> Roll video. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's not going to happen. This is the video. That's something else that I'll show you in two seconds. There's admiring, curiously vested leader of a sleeper cell of crypto communists who have piratically captured the Labour Party. I think it's totally inappropriate to describe anyone as naked, even me. So, how much will it cost? I'll give you the figure in a moment. You, you don't know it. Um, what you, are we you're logging into your iPad there. Yeah. You've announced a major policy and you don't know how much it will cost. The Prime Minister is not here tonight. She can't be bothered. So why should you? In fact, Bake Off is on BBC Two next. Why not make yourself a brew? British Muslim. I say this. Oh my god, he's went hanging. Down, went down. Did he fall? No, he didn't. Oh, oh geez. Oh. about uh, well, a handful of people designing for Snapchat every single day, um, seven days a week, uh, using mostly After Effects and... Don't worry. Is, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I hate Google Slides, by the way. Um, yeah, so we're, so we're doing that, learning on the job. I mean, it's now helping us uh, progress onto things like Instagram Stories, giving our design team a much broader role in terms of how they're telling stories in a day-to-day -day basis. So I've been given the five-minute warning, and so I'm going to speed up briefly. The last thing I want to quickly show you was our latest thing that we've been launching this week, which is a whole new channel of our website, a whole new um, aspect of our journalism. We're recruiting loads of journalists in the States and in the, the Far East to, to report on technology and how it's changing our lives. And we launched this th on Monday. Um, it was a, for me, the reason why I'm showing it is partly because you're all into technology, so you might be interested in looking at it. But also, uh, it was a really great example of the brand designers, the digital designers, the product designers, the editorial designers, the graphics team, the illustrators, everybody working. All those people I showed you on the first slide all pulled together to make the next few slides work. This is the video that we launched with. <laughs>
that launched on Monday, um, the the design team made the video. We got an animator in to help us with the video. We did the sound design. We've had people doing HTML5 on-site ads, taking the spirit of the the, the video through to code for for the site and making these leaderboard adverts uh, to encourage people to sign up and register for it. We commissioned in-house, designers in-house, each had a, some time to do some illustration work to illustrate the stories. Uh, hopefully this will play as well. Um, so the long-form journalism that's supporting this, we made those illustrations start moving. So these are some of the designers who worked on the Snapchat project have now been using this on slightly more conventional forms of journalism. Um, these are designed and uh, illustrated in-house. These are big kind of header lead hero assets on the site. Uh, then the cool thing about this, which is a real like uh, turnaround, is that we commissioned those things mostly for the website and for the for the long form journalism, but then made sure that the illustrators were thinking with a broadsheet newspaper in mind as well. So if you think about the ultimate sort of widescreen um, design, responsive design, so these illustrations all were, are being printed this week. So they're all going to be up online and printed, which I think for us as a sort of publication and how we publish is uh, is. I think for me really satisfying that those designers are for the first time these are quite young like designers out grad maybe in the last year working on snapchat learning after effects publishing on snapchat then commissioned to do some illustration then they see their illustration in broadsheet print and it's blown their minds uh, they've all been like grabbing copies of the paper and i'm like but that's a newspaper why are you interested in that and they've all been taking those home so that's been quite quite rewarding so this is the, yeah the same illustration you just saw um this is really cheeky, but I thought I'd quickly sneak this one in here. <laughs> so we are we're hiring. If you think any of that sounds interesting, this guy, david.franklin at telegraph.co.uk, send your CV to him. Tell him what you're interested in doing. We have jobs in different roles across the Telegraph. I'll leave that hanging there for a minute. Maybe you want to go to the questions now while people are quickly sort of sending David a quick humor. I'm really sorry about that, but thanks for your time. Uh, really happy to answer any questions.